Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. All right, everybody. So welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I am Scott. I'm Sam. And today is the full-fledged deep dish episode for season one, uh, episode seven, an almost religious awe. And, you know, we're super excited to talk about this show. Uh, Sam, before we get to the good stuff, uh, the meat, why don't you give them the potatoes, which is where to find us. Potatoes! House cleaning potatoes! All right, so make sure that you guys are going to our website first and foremost. We got all our content there and all our links and everything on where we are and where we're supposed to be and what we've done. Yep. All right, make sure that you're um, subscribing, number one. Subscribe. Number two, subscribe. Um, make sure that you are um, checking out all our podcast platforms from like um, Apple um, Podcasts, Google Play, um, Spotify. We're on TuneIn, you know, um, we're basically anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Make sure that you follow us on social media oh. at Neurocyclopedia. All right. We are all over Twitter, Facebook, and um, um, Instagram. Make sure that you are – we have a um, Facebook group on uh, <laughs> Facebook group on Facebook called Sam and Scott are Watching Watchmen. So we you know, do this, you know, deep dive discussions on there. So make sure that you join that. Absolutely. And as you know, here on the Nerd Cyclopedia channel, you get a lot of different shows, different inputs, uh, different shows. So Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, Nerd Cyclopedia. Uh, you also get Carbonite Bounty BS, the A Mandalorian podcast, which is a podcast about The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. You get Nobody Cares. Uh, you get Sam's reviews when Sam wants to talk about something and I'm too lazy to get on the horn. So definitely subscribe to the channel. There's plenty for everybody. And remember, if you like what you see and you want to listen to us in the car, subscribe to us on the podcast app. You want to watch our? You don't want to watch the long forums. You want to listen to those. Hey, no one's gonna yell at you, except I'm gonna <laughs> yell at you here. But it's okay. <laughs> it's as long as you're subscribed here. I don't really care where you get the content. So just go ahead and subscribe. Get the blanket pass, and we can move on. Uh, if really you don't want to look at our ugly faces, you can listen to our horrible voices. That's right. <laughs> We've got the type of face that reminds you of that. Our mothers love our voices. That's what there we go. Doing. There we go. There we go. I've never, uh, I've never traded on my looks before, and I'm not going to start now for the fact that it's impossible. <laughs> You're not going to shill out like that. <laughs> no. I, no. uh, I don't need anything that I can, you know. I don't need to do anything. I'm going to get compensated for and rolled change. You know. That's <laughs> no thanks. Uh, so this this is a pretty awesome episode of television, and it's on the heels of last week, uh, which was all about. Hooded Justice, all about the first costumed adventure, the first masked adventurer, and the revelation that he was a, a black, black person, man. a black man masquerading as a white man for the purposes of not being murdered <laughs> for protection, <laughs> right? So the hood is not the mask. Right. The paint's the mask. It's such an interesting inversion of that story. Super, super neat. Uh, layers upon layers of, you know, what this guy will read. This, this story sam is about the first superhero mm -hmm. the god dr manhattan who he is what he's doing and in lindelofian fashion like right before the end you can sort of see all of the plots converging Just, right. you can see him kind of coming back together uh yeah. and i'm interested to see where they're going with this i've got some ideas for later just like how Dr. Manhattan in that when he went into that ex intrinsic chamber, you know, he was um, his a whole he came he went in there. John Osterman, he got split apart, came back together, like we'll you said. We'll, um, uh, 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 well, OK, we'll see. Look, that, that's speculation. So let's let's just let's just get let's get into it, because okay. Okay. there's no reason to point off. There's, you don't want to put off a good conversation and podcasting. People tune out. So Cal is Dr. Manhattan. Uh, Angela's <sighs> husband Cal is Doctor Manhattan. She is and known. She the whole knew time. about it. And it was she her knew idea. About it. It was. It was. It was hey, his idea, right? It was his idea that she said, but she knew about it. Yeah. You know. So wow, that's a mind blown right there. I mean, you know, that, that's that's so crazy, and it's. Uh, you were thinking out, you know, that that the doc is on Mars, you know, on right. your wherever he is and everything. We're thinking that he's off planet. Mm -hmm. He's right there in front of our faces this whole time. He and, and it's a convenient answer for a lot of questions. Like, how did Angela yeah. survive that attack? How did right. you know uh, where did he come from? Why don't they have a backstory? Who did this person right. material? What, what's about this accident? Why did they move to Tulsa? All this stuff is going to make sense. And having Doctor Manhattan be what ties everything together, it, it completes its own loop because <coughs> it sure looks like 
what's going to happen is Dr. Manhattan is going to now talk to Angela in 1995 or whatever year uh-huh. that is that he meets up with her. Uh, crazy neat. I, I think that make it, what do you think about the idea of changing the titular race of a superhero from white to black in one episode? And then is that what you think they're doing here? Or do you see this as, as something different than, than uh, like a race swap or a race inversion? Um, I don't think it's a race inversion. I think it's a way of, uh, it's, it's just one of his uh, uh, many forms that he can take, you know? Uh, and this is our disagreement, right? Because I think mm-hmm. we disagree on this point and it's pretty rare when we have a real full fledged, like we just don't see the same way on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so for the record, what I think is that the the origin story we have been told about Dr. Manhattan is fake. <clears throat> I believe that we are going to find out that the real origin of Dr. Manhattan is very different from what has been told to us. And that the reason is that the government in 1960 thought that everyone would freak out if Dr. Manhattan was a black person. That's what I really think. Okay, I think that's where they're going with this. <clears throat> now, Sam, you disagree. Yes, kinda. Um, kinda. They kinda. already to 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 double do that, to double down, uh, whatever you want to call, call it. They they've already re recontextualized Hooded Justice, mm-hmm. you know, in the in the story, you know, narrative and everything. Not to say that they can't do that or shouldn't do that and everything, but. Um, to, to stack this narrative on top of what we just found out with Hooded Justice, mm. it's, it's a lot, you mm. know. Um, it's, it's just a lot. To be confined in, in, the, in the very few episodes that we're getting this particular season, it's a lot to put in there to, to recontextualize um, um, Dr. Manhattan's whole origin mm. to include race, you know, as far as this. And I can see where you're coming from as far as, like, you know, government conspiracies and them, you know, lying and um, um, telling us something, um, um, to placate, like, you know, to placate all this and everything. I could, I could totally see that. But in this is so many layers, is so many things going on in Watchmen to add this on or just be like, wow, okay, that's, that's still a lot. And it's only two episodes left. You're right. You're right. And, and that's, and those are good reasons to think that I'm wrong, uh, for sure. <laughs> and I'm not, I don't think I, I don't know that I am, uh, it would be an interesting yeah. inversion to have this be the story he tells everyone, uh, and and to have it be my twist was is that it's Adrian wrote it <laughs> while oh my while he god was on okay so Jupiter. now Adrian wrote it <laughs> yeah. and then okay. Doctor Manhattan's like no this is how you showed up mm. uh, anyway it's all it's all it's interesting speculation it's the type of thing that a show has to be good for you to want to do because yeah. speculation yeah. the yeah. inherent thing with speculation is I'm watching this on Sunday right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, If I didn't care, I wouldn't be doing a show. We wouldn't be taking our times out of our lives to do this show to talk to you guys. For free. Fictional. Exactly. For For free. Fictional. For fictional beings, you know, it's, it's, it's some craziness, but we're that much fans. I mean, we're, we're, we love Watchmen. So we, 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 we're gracious to be here talking about it with you guys. Absolutely. And, and this is, and this episode again, you know, upturned, upturns the table, right? And, you know, we might as well kind of go through a little bit of the recap yeah. And, yeah. and talk about Let's things as they come. Uh, but I wanted to get a little bit of that information out of the way. I'm sure people are looking for that info. So you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> don't shout, have shout to search out for Reddit it. and Discord, um, you know, yes. users and everything for Discord, pointing this out weeks Discord ago. Watchmen TV spoilers Discord group. We are not worthy. That was, I mean, seriously, every single thing that's happened, I saw in that group two or three weeks before. I may have uh, to stop so. reading them and watching them because... I'm I'm looking in and and see. I, I will I will rather be surprised about a, a reveal like this than to already actually just know it. I mean, but I can't help there's it. There's a difference. See, there's a difference between <laughs> between like it's next year and I'm doing that right. Yeah. And I'm doing it in real time because the information's not out yet, so it's always speculative. So I can always just be like, ah, they're lying, or they're yeah. maybe they're wrong. Even yeah. if it's you can yeah. tell me, you know, you could tell me that. Uh, we're going to find out the comedian is Lori's father or something. And I'm like, <laughs> no way. Uh, this is a good episode of TV. This show's really proven that it's worth it. It's worth the time. It's worth and, the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from our read this year and our podcast series about the book, 
that's something that's important. Uh, we wanted it to be worth the time. Yeah, yeah, we 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 took the chance to um to 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 uh, review and recap all those issues and everything, and now we get a great show on top of it. It's it's like heaven. And so it's so get, deep, so deep and dense. So, and, so 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 deep. Let's let's get into this recap. Yeah, it's like a cake you didn't bake long enough, tough and, and, and juicy. And it came out and it came out good anyway. Yeah, it did. And it's like a brownie cake now. Loose there chocolate. We. Now it's is that <laughs> cake underdone? Nope, it's pudding. <laughs> All right. All right. So the Watchmen TV logo is a TV set. It's a VHS set. And for kids, that's called tracking. And it would bring the picture in line with the screen. Mm -hmm. If you were real fancy, your VCR would have auto tracking and you wouldn't have to do that manually with a little knob. So uh, that I remember that you're welcome. Auto kids. tracking and tracking. <laughs> you're welcome. Make sure you have that thing on EP also, or else you're only gonna get like three Simpsons go. episodes on there. You exactly. want to get like ten, maybe fifteen. If you can get two seasons of The Simpsons on a VHS, you're really doing the work right. And that's uh, and that's the truth. <laughs> All right, so we come to a video store, and again for the kids, this is a store that I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, so we come into a video store, a Vietnamese blockbuster, and. Um, we have a Dr. Manhattan documentary that's playing. They're talking all about Dr. Manhattan and his origin. And it's the origin we've seen. That we've seen on we the show. Seen on the we've show. seen in the movies. And we've seen in the comic books. Exactly. You know, stomping all over Vietnam. <laughs> yes. In his, in his big blue with his black, um, you know, um, drawers. Mercifully. <laughs> wearing the drawers. When you get to be that size, it's just a distraction. <laughs> Can't just let him hang just like that, you know. Yeah. Got to put on some drawers, Doc. Some, you know. Somewhere, somebody in this universe has a pipe, and he's like, "Do you believe that Doctor Manhattan increases in size proportionately?" <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So it's a, it's a documentary about the Doctor Manhattan, his origin, and the conquest of Vietnam, and that's because it is Victory in Vietnam night, and we're in late '80s Saigon, which is basically treated like uh, Albuquerque. Yeah, it's it's Americanized to the extreme um, in a very imperial way. Um, we find a young Angela in the video store. She's looking at videos. She picks Sister Knight uh, out. And some of the other titles here, we had Tusky. We had Monsters from Outer Space. Mm -hmm. And Fog Dancing. Well, I've seen that Fog Dancing. Wow. Fog dancing. <laughs> Mr. Shea's Fog Dancing. And then Angela tries to leave with the video. The guy at the counter says, your parents won't let her. They usually don't let her watch that stuff. Uh, it's Dr. Manhattan Festival, basically, right? Is this victory? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, but hold on. Let's let's get it. Let's let's look. Uh, what's the title of the um the actual video? Oh. Sister Knight. <laughs> Sister Knight. The nun with the motherfucking gun. Yes. Man, if that's not a black exploitation title out of the you know the hey, that's some good shit right there. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I guess this is a Pam Greer movie uh, in our universe, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, really. Uh, and, and if, hey, if you read the PD of PD yes. files, P <laughs> her name was what Pamela Davis, yeah, something like you that. know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. actress or something like that. Yeah. And one of the cool things about PD PD is it clues you in on some of the, the cultural backgrounds on this. So um, a lot of black people emigrated to Vietnam in this timeline yes. to, to escape yeah. persecution. So black culture during, during the Nixon um, era, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they moved from the Deep South to Vietnam um, to escape the Jim Crow state. And when they got to Vietnam, there was opportunities and they could make art. Like, and so the black exploitation cinema in this timeline is centered in Saigon, which is an interesting, interesting wrinkle to all yes. this and explains why you can't get a copy of sister Knight in Oklahoma, because <laughs> this is a Vietnamese, this is like a, a Vietnamese state company. So it's like a regional, uh, regional outlet. Uh, oh, so cool. So how about this next scene where you have a puppet master mm -hmm. who's a puppet master and, <laughs> Was he a puppet show? The puppet master of the puppet show's got a scar on his face. Dr. Manhattan conquering the peasants. Uh, he gives a guy on a bike a backpack. The dude says, uh, death to the Imperial invaders. Jumps in the truck, blows himself up. Uh, and Angela watches her parents. Oh, uh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Kill you know, him. yeah, yeah. Blows her out of bed. Yep. Uh, this scene here is interesting. So this is about all we get out of Marcus Abar, and he says something that's important. He says that, uh, you know, people in the mass have something to hide. Mm hmm That's what he believes. Yep. And we saw him as a um, little kid last episode yes. being, you know, with his dad just angry. You know, his dad was, you know, being angry. And Hoodie Justice being angry at his son for potentially 
mimicking him, you know, potentially taking on. Yeah, yeah. And the ways, you know, he put on the whole mask, you know, the the makeup and everything. Mm -hmm. And he he didn't want his son to repeat his, um, you know, repeat that. So apparently this day and he, and he snatched him up and his, um, you know, June, um, June. Yeah. Right. So June, you know, um, um, snatched, uh, you know, his son back and everything. And, you know, this is, this is, um, this is stuck with, you know, it stayed with him for so long and everything. So he says, you know, this to, um, Angela. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they won't let her watch sister night. Right. Yet. Mm-hmm. Too young, too little. Yeah. Too right. little to see something so violent mm-hmm. as as Sister Knight, the nun with a motherfucking gun. <clears throat> for, she's about to see something much more violent, though. Oh man! So and this is gonna... this is this 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 is where trauma starts, guys. Yes. So this is this is very 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 crucial to her narrative. And this is the answer to Lori's question: Why do you wear the mask? Why Sister Knight? Mm-hmm. That's why. All right. So pretty dope origin um as far as her whole, you know, get up and why why oh, she's yeah. doing it. <laughs> it's definitely unique, right? Because it's not you know, you think someone that's gonna be in a uh in an orphanage in Vietnam, and Vietnam's a French tradition, right? So that's uh, right, right, Vietnam right, right, right. Vietnam right. was a French colonial possession for a while. So the mm-hmm. orphanages will probably be run by French or like from French order of nuns. Uh, mm-hmm. It's interesting that it's just this. It's just this movie. It's just this movie, you know. Just, she copied everything she's seen from the movie with the black bees and everything, yeah. you know, and decide, okay, I'm gonna take this on. I mean, it's a really crazy thing because essentially she's cosplaying this character from the movie, yeah. you know, and actually taking on as her whole persona and stuff. That's mm-hmm. a really psychological. That's a, that's really psychologically um, um, crazy it's, in it's a way. It's a forbidden fruit. Yeah, her parents would not let her. Exactly, this right? Path would not let so her I'm see a, these things. So I'm gonna take on this persona for myself. You and know? I'm gonna use it to protect myself right. from the pain. From, from the, the pain. pain, like Lori said, from the pain. <laughs> you got something to hide. Why you, you got something? Hey, you're hiding something if you're wearing a mask, right? Everyone knows that. Uh, so Angela wakes up and she's in Lady True's vivarium, mm-hmm. and she's hooked up to some sort of IV. There's a tutorial injection. Which is, I probably guess she sees this video, and we find out that she's going to be having her uh, grandfather's memories sucked out of her, right? Because her brain will be flooded with a cerebral spinal fluid from a natural host. Mm. Well, his memories will come out, but she might experience her own vivid memories, which accounts for what she's seeing Saigon for. Right. Uh, we find out the Millennium Clock's going to activate, and Cal, who's <laughs> only Cal, not anything else. <laughs> so Cal comes to see Angela and is rebuffed by Byung. Right. Now a holographic image of a holographic her. image um, of Byung. Right. Mm-hmm. Beyond's hologram, right? right with, uh, with Tupac and Beyond. <laughs> She's gonna go on tour. She's gonna give her dissertation on stage. Uh, I go see it. However, however she does it, you know. I go see it. It's amazing how this technology in this world, you know, gets to that and everything. She just they just put the the thing on the ground. And there's a, a holographic image of her in the light like that, right? Check out this frisbee. Uh, the thing the- that just 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 keeps just um um so, Doctor Manhattan changed everything everything from people's um um not only their 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 spiritual, mental, and you know um, emotional sense, but technology and everything. Because before then, it was just regular Earth. You couldn't really it. It was. It would have been far fetched to even get something like this, you know, on the um, on the stage, um, as far as like you know holograms and you know just just different sci fi related stuff. You can all point it back to Doctor Manhattan uh, and his ability yeah. to synthesize lithium mm-hmm. and thus give them the power revolution that mm-hmm. I think future is the power to figure have. it out. Yeah, right. So people they used to talk about like Back to the Future has cold fusion in it, like that. Like what? What's that all about? Uh, you know, so you know, a power revolution gives you flying cars and cold fusion, all that stuff. We don't, we didn't get that because we got the information revolution instead, which is <laughs> why we're here on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, you know, they did things a little different. They didn't get videotapes apparently. No. You know, they stopped all that. They so. cut the VHS. Like cut the VHS. <laughs> man, yeah. How much money is Blockbuster worth in this? In this universe, do you, th- the, you think the, they're the, still the, the, There's no blockbuster. No, no there's, blockbuster. You don't think there's blockbuster for them? They don't have the internet. 
That's our question of the week. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to put that up. Uh, <laughs> is there a blockbuster in the Watchmen world? I would say yes. <laughs> Instead, they're reintroducing VHSs, I think, on the on the yeah. Pedipedia set. Yeah. Uh, so, Lori mm-hmm. is over at the Crawfords, mm-hmm. and Petey radios her that Looking Glass has straight up won in his little uh, you know altercation with the Seventh Cavalry, and he took a mask. Mm-hmm. which means you can't tell who he is. <laughs> and he, so he's running around. One would imagine he's not with the 7th Cav because he just murdered five of them. He just murdered five of them. How smart, how smart Alec. <laughs> the way, the way that PD um, respond or tells, you know, just exposes, um, you know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah, extremely, but how ex- he exposes the information of her. Remember when you told me to go over <laughs> to um, um, the Looking Glass house and yeah. you know such 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 and like how we was talking about the instant pot and everything. Where were these, Where did we see all that information of what he was saying? Mm-hmm. You know, right beforehand, mm-hmm. we saw it right in the PDPedia files and everything because that wasn't displayed in the, in the, uh, in the previous episode nor the episode beforehand. Um, and it was two episodes that we just seen. Um, the 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 seven cavalry members come after Wade, mm-hmm. you know, right at the end. Two so, episodes. Right it's been two end. weeks. So it's, it's, it's been two Dangling. weeks. You know, we we don't know. I mean, it's been such. I mean, these past episodes have been so great that we forgot that it actually happened. You know? know, but we see like the aftermath, and um, PD is telling <laughs> telling Lori, and Lori is being so sarcastic. It's as if I just told you the exact or the you know um, said it to you verba- verbatim. <laughs> Exactly as I told you that and everything. And we learned all that from the PDPD files. Yeah, so definitely check those out. There's so many, I mean, there's enough good information. I, I just there. love the way that, that, that it connects, you know, to the show yeah. and it rewards us at the same time. And that's the sign, you know, we talked about this all winter and all summer. We talked about Watchmen, the, the, the graphic novel, and we talked about the density. Now you can read it again and look at it again. You're going to see something you missed. It's going to tie everything together more. And that's the yeah. mark of cogent writing and good writing. So excellent, right? Attention to detail. It, it really matters too. And people appreciate that. Absolutely. They do. I know I do. Oh, so, yeah. and last time I checked people. Yep. 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 So and yeah. So, so, so Wade is uh, apparently took a, um, a mask off. Mm-hmm. So he's yeah. running around as a, with a Rorschach mask, hmm. do whatever he wants. Hmm. Uh, hopefully I'm sure that'll show up eventually. Uh, Lori and Jane Crawford here meet, and Laurie basically lays on the line everything that's going on to Jane. <laughs> uh, Angela's OD'd on nostalgia. Her her grandfather is Hooded Justice, Justice right. a black guy. That's kind right. of the way she says it in the in the House of the Clan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, and she says, "Well, President Joe will be behind it all. You won't be able to tell who the good guys or bad guys are anymore." And then uh, Jane says. Well, the president seems like small potatoes. And then, was I not supposed to confess? <laughs> Lori is like, what? <laughs> like, you know, um, she didn't see this coming. <laughs> Look, Lori, as smart as Lori is and everything, she did not expect, you know, this turnabout of events um, for um, just uh, wife there. And, and this is a very Mr. Burns-esque sort of thing mm-hmm. that, that happens here. You know, there's a lot of episodes of The Simpsons where a big weight falls down out of the sky or like a, a trap door opens up or someone gets sucked out of a tube out of his office. So uh, definitely had that energy with the like the old style, like 1980s garage door opener. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you keep pressing it until it actually opens. Yeah. And it kind of <laughs> went clunk, clunk, clunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Jane says, Lori Blake, stop by. Do you want me to, you want me to kill her? <laughs> what do you want me to do with it? Want me to kill what do you want to kill her? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, we cut back to Angela over at Lady True's. People with metal implants are told to remove them. All right. Oh. <laughs> that Millennium Clock is scary. It's scary. Every time they mention the Millennium Clock or show it, it gets scarier and scarier, like what that thing does. You know what I mean? Uh, What's going to happen with this Please thing? remove all metal implants. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So beyond gives Angela a test, a psychological test to see if she's getting any empathy. Right. She asks, why are you a cop? And we get another dream sequence. And this one ruthless, but correct. 
So the police come by to show Angela. Can you identify the perpetrator? Can you identify the puppet master? Right. And Angela says, I'm not yep. scared. That's him. <laughs> can I listen? Yeah, do not, yeah. Do the, not the... fuck with Sister Knight. <laughs> Don't do that. She's tough. <clears throat> what did you make of this scene, Sam? What did you think of the uh, the summary execution of the puppet master? Well, I, I was surprised, but not surprised. You know, um, Angela, you know, and her reaction to it and everything, she's toughening up. She's already been through the, like, the trauma with her parents and everything. So, mm. and um, she, she, she's in this, um, you know, she's sleeping with, with um, this foster, you know, environment that she's in Orphan. and everything. Uh, yeah, she's orphan basically. Mm -hmm. um, so them um, executing, taking them around back, basically shooting them down like a dog, yeah. you know, um, to complete this is 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 crazy. Well, there's a know? very there's a this is obviously echoes of the during the Vietnam War, the very mm -hmm. famous picture of the police chief assassinating the Viet Viet Minh spy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Viet Cong spy. Um, very, very famous. It's you, you've seen it. I'm sure this Pul Pulitzer prize winning right. picture, mm -hmm. uh, a summary execution in Vietnam harkens back to that. It's retribution mm -hmm. and Angela likes mm -hmm. the justice as retribution. Mm -hmm. So this is embracing the way her grandfather would go about justice. Right. This is her saying, retribution is the part i like i like right. the punishment yeah i don't care about the reform and it's easy to understand why she's so hardened i mean one of the things that the law exists for is to prevent people from going out and getting revenge mm -hmm. but for angela the law can get her revenge and that's one of the things the law is designed to do. I think retributive justice is important in some cases. Right, right. Uh, some extreme cases. Um, uh, super interesting. They're bringing and, up stuff like that, man. This show's yeah, got so much philosophy. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. yeah. And and, and the um the cop gave her the badge and everything, mm -hmm. and which um she she is the badge to her is basically how Batman got his inspiration from the bat flying into yes. the cell. Yes. You know. So um, that gives her the role that she's got the path. The, so the path is pretty much laid right there in the direction she's going to go, you know, at that young age. And it's amazing how that just carries on into her adult, you know, we, adult get that, self. we get that cut here where June says, you're going to get justice with that hood. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get justice with that badge rule, Reeves. Mm -hmm. You're going to get justice with that hood. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's when they throw the hood on the guy mm -hmm. and take him around back, mm -hmm. which is effectively what those guys did to Will. Yeah. Except, of course, big difference here. Will didn't mm -hmm. do anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and this is this is something that's interesting. You know, for us as the audience, we're given the bird's eye information that he's definitely definitely guilty, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. not a not a question about whether this person right. is guilty. Right. So, right. the question of whether the question here is: Is the state capable of doing retributive justice? Is right. that something that can help the state? Um, so I'm not going to get down that rabbit hole too much because this isn't philosophy 315. <laughs> uh, this is Sam has got our watching Watchmen. So how do you like this cut here from the talking to BN? And we, we get the idea from BN's conversation with Angela that she's experiencing memories the same way Angela is. Right. She's getting these memories pumped into her. She says, it feels so real. I'm old and I'm scared and it hurts. And Angela says, it hurt too. And that's what we get as far as the commiseration here. Well, you called it. Um, I did. I did call it. Called it. You called it. We didn't get it to get to that scene yet, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> She's experiencing these memories for some reason, you yes. know. Um, Angela, you know, she sits up and really takes note, um, you know, to her experiences and everything. Because being actually comes off as like, okay, she's a. Um, you know, she she she's another servant, but actually is coming in there to like, a, you know, um, be part of the process as far as Angela's uh, what I want to say, um, part of her, you know, a recovery effort and everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, you know, she starts to, you know, she starts to get a little personal, you know, with what the same as the experience that she was in, you know, she was she was having. Well, it's really cool about, you know, this is another that's another PDPD bounty. 
you know the harvest of pedipedia is you know lady true's mother was named bien mm -hmm. and she had a way that she raised her and they burnt her village and all this stuff was in there to give us clues to that so again check that out for sure uh i love this transition mm -hmm. when they transition from angela's eyes yeah to <laughs> the windows in in the the uh, court right of the uh of the game a game game the warden, game warden. <laughs> and it looks so much like Dr. Manhattan's eyes, the blue with the big white. Yeah. And, and we just cut down, which I think is confirmation that that's who's running the jail for retired heroes on Europa <laughs> or whatever. And this next scene here, the trial of Adrian Veidt, a.k.a. The Ozzy most Mandis. hilarious thing I've seen in this show all, all, all season, man. I mean, this this. This this trial here apparently has been happening for a good year. Now. A whole year. <laughs> and you figure like, you know, the point of having Adrian up here is to keep him busy. So mm. of course the way this would happen would be through the most pedantic and reductive <laughs> and repetitive and you know across the T and dot the I and yeah, you know, yeah, of course yeah. that's what these guys are doing because they don't want to they don't want to wrap this up and give Adrian <laughs> no, his freedom anytime no, so soon. My, my, my question is, what were they doing the other days? How, was, how Exhibit was... <laughs> One, see here <laughs> the bodies of thousands of us things and how many hours in court because like like he was saying on the instant um instant react and everything you know the um the 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 um artist and everything was drawing his face every single yeah. day. <laughs> same thing <laughs> uh, i love this so not the sonographer and everything was typing <laughs> every <single day. clears throat> The evidence was like oh, reams, and reams and reams and reams and reams. And the best part about this, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of go through. So so the, the prosecuting, we come to, in on the closing statement. The prosecution is basically saying, you know, uh, Adrian Veidt is a very bad man. Mm -hmm. And you should probably tell him that yeah. and not allow him to be free. Uh, we talk about him murdering 3 million people. We talk about he's been murdering all of us from the moment he pulls us out of the lake <laughs> until he inevitably slaughters us. Uh, and then the prosecutor winks at him. It's right about here that I, I noticed that um, the judge's bench is that uh, infinic, intrinsic field generator prop from the play on its side, which is very funny to me. Uh, and man, what do you think about Adrian's crimes, Sam? I mean, when you kind of lay them all out there, pretty pretty vast huh oh yeah 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 i mean you know when when you add everything up and you see everything put on paper or mm -hmm. you know visually you know um said to you all at one time yeah, yeah it's some boy he, it, hey adrian's a bad guy you know and even he has to to really take it into account wow i did some shit I you know adrian's at the age where you know he's reflecting you know he's reflecting and actually somebody is telling it back to him um because also think about it too, Scott. We see Adrian in a much different. Um, um, we see Adrian, Adrian, Adrian's younger self in a much different demeanor and everything versus what we see now. You know, he's um, young, he's spry, he's very optimistic on what he wants to do. Um, he's very confident. You know, um, here he's broken all the way down. <laughs> Down to nothing. Down to nothing. The judge asked for Adrian's Deservedly closing statement. Deservedly so. The judge asked for Adrian's closing statement, and he farts oh. really long and really loud in a highbrow prestige HBO drama. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then says, the defense rests. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <ha, ha>. <laughs> <laughs> right before the Crookshanks, you know, the, um, the, the she gave him a little wink and everything. Man. That was killing me, man. That was just and then they and then they um uh, they go through all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then the judge says, "I have assembled an alternate jury. You must be judged by a jury of your peers." <laughs> <laughs> and all of these pigs come running in, <laughs> and I'm just I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, like, what was the point of having him go through all this painstaking testimony and this painstaking investigation, and then just be like, "What do you think, little piggy?" <laughs> Guilty! <laughs> they could have done that with 
day three. He's like, he was like, these aren't even your peers. Right. <laughs> I'm going to get some. <laughs> You're not even good enough to be our lake people clone. You're not good enough for that. We're going to treat you. You got a pig. Yeah, that's it. A pig. And he's sitting up there, the look on his face, he's sitting up there just looking, it's like, it's nothing I can do about this. Nothing. Nothing. And we see from the um the, you know, the um two episodes ago, um, when he when he when 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 he gathers all the bodies to to say save me and everything, yeah. it's not like he's escaping. Right. You know, he's actually stuck in this place he's and just wait. can't get out. He's <laughs> gotta wait. Best case scenario, he's on Europa, you know? He's halfway across the solar system. Oh. Uh, so he's screwed. This, uh, this is some scene. And and the the close the clones chant guilty, and Ozzy Mandius cries a single tear. Which? Why? Why does he care? I, I, I don't that know. I didn't get. So that's okay. Uh, that's okay. Once in a while. Hey. Oh. Uh, we go back to Angela now. Uh, Angela wakes up. He, he probably cried that single tear because he was like, man, this is hell. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a paradise, but I will escape. Exactly. Oh, I will no. escape. Oh, man. I hope that was the yeah. Mrs. Cruxshanks that was the prosecutor, too. Yeah. Uh, we come back. Lady True offers to take Angela dinner after we find out that her, her grandfather's locked behind a keypad uh, with a hand print generator on there. And Lady True says... You know, total amnesia is extremely rare. It <laughs> and then how do you know, Cal? Uh, on, on, on the second watch, True is just, she's just, uh We know. all know what this is. But we, we all know what this is, but she's just baiting Angela. She's just baiting her, you know. And um, the, the dynamic, dynamic I mean, is some really great acting going on between these two. You know, the yeah. dynamic, the, the, the back and forth between them two and, and, you know, finally in the next scene, we we get um, True calling her own own stuff and everything. But go ahead. All right, so it's so great here. We have you know, Angela asks her how she knows Cal, and mm -hmm. then she asks her whose nostalgia is your daughter taking? Right, Which right. She takes uh, True back. Right, and she says, "Her own begins my mother." <laughs> <laughs> which i call it like, like, like yeah 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 we cool. heard it we heard this all before and everything guy puts on a tinfoil hat and you know is actually right about something should have put money on that buddy you know that ducks you know the other <laughs> cunt sound <laughs> That's what I just, all right go with that yeah all right and then uh Angela asked Lady True, your dad's going to be here too? Right. You will be. All right. That's terrifying. <laughs> she will not tell her also what the clock does. No, 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 no. She tells her everything else, but will not go into the clock. No, you not going to go in the clock. Wow. Uh, and then we get a night. Nice, we get Senator Keene versus Lori Blake here. Wait, did we just skip a whole scene about um because um right before the cause this is where they have lunch, right? Yeah. <clears throat> right before then, Lord um uh Angela was trying to bust into that um door. Did that right. um she uses her hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I mentioned okay. that. But if I okay. wasn't clear, okay. I apologize. Okay, okay. All right. I think I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah, stop that. Okay. I know listen, everybody knows you watch first. That's part of the deal. We negotiated this. It took us like three hours <laughs> to talk about. So, so, so the elephant thing happened after this. Yeah, yeah. The elephant ha okay. thing happens right. later when she smashes it with a rock. But that's a separate scene. Right. And it comes <clears throat> during True's speech, which is just uh, just a little bit. But we get Keen versus Lori Blake here, and uh, Lori tells him, "Don't don't bother telling me your plan. Like just, I don't care. Just shut up." But. Uh, Senator Keene seems unable not to tell her about his plan, in fact. In fact, I will tell you. Indeed. It's kind of the energy we get There's some, right? some, some, some villainy, straight comic book villainy stuff. But what I love, the line I love from Lori is the fact that she just seems resigned about this whole thing, period. Yeah. She says, I'm tired of the silliness. Yeah. She uses the word silliness as if it's, it's, it's like a culmination of everything that we've seen in the Watchmen graphic novel up until now. All this is just bullshit, you know. 
You guys put on, um, the, you know, this Hooded Justice puts on his mask, inspires two generations of, you know, costume vigilanteism and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and it's silly, you know, in her eyes and everything. And she mm -hmm. was involved with it. Her mother, you know, involved with it. So the, 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 the vitriol that comes out of her mouth when she tells, you know, um, talks to Joe Keen and everything, that I'm tired of the silliness. <laughs> so everything that you're telling me, I don't give a shit about. <laughs> she says, I don't give a shit. I've seen it all. You know, I've been with a man who can, um, <laughs> you Doing know, took me to things. Mars. You know what I'm saying? Literally I'm and figuratively. Silly this. So. Both exactly. literally and figuratively. Right. Literally he did and figuratively several times. In fact, right. Keen right. says this line here. That's this grievance, grievance laden line that Lori scoffs at. And it's, uh, it's restoring a balance. It's difficult to be a white man in America. And then he says, might try being a blue one. Yeah, that took her back. She was like, what are you guys trying to do here? Woo! What are you trying to pull? <laughs> we get to, now we get to hear Lady True's speech. You will gaze without despair on her works. Ye mighty. And a version of the Ozymandias trope from the poem. Yep. Yep. And Angela just bashes open the door with a rock here, which makes me think not a great designed lock. Not at all. No. <laughs> that, that could just, I was surprised that it did open, yeah. How'd that work? Like, well, shouldn't that have not worked? I feel like that shouldn't have worked. That should not have worked, but yet it did. So, you know, it's still a TV show at the end of the day. That's right. And <laughs> neither is the second door locked, which lets us into the pen for the <gasps> elephant. Right? That's weird. Random yeah, elephant. Super, 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 super weird. I mean, and that not, elephant is definitely not big enough to get in that room, right? Like, that door was little. Yeah. Big elephant. Yeah. Huh. Great, 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 great point. Great point. So I <clears> grow <throat> up in there? I don't know. Anyway. What's your Tim Full Hat theory as far as that? The elephant? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Magic. I... <laughs> well, Dr. Right. Manhattan's going to be here soon, so. Hey, you know, he's going to answer a lot of questions for yeah. us. To do the movie voice, I'll just make it small and then make it big again. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy Billy Crudup. <laughs> boy, if they brought him back to be Dr. Manhattan, I would have just been through the, you know, through the moon as far as that. Billy like, Crudup hey, comes it back. Is what it, is. It's, it is what it is. They seem to be going with a more slender. Right, right. Like a more like a fitness model. Dr. Manhattan, and less like a Schwarzenegger-esque yeah, you know, yeah. bodybuilder Dr. Manhattan. I'm good. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. As long as there's 0% body fat, which is really the only... Because <laughs> he designed himself. Why would he make it yeah. be any body fat? Exactly. Exactly, right? That's all that is, guys. I promise. Uh, <laughs> so Angela pulls off her IV, mm -hmm. and this takes her back under a reverie about her grandmother, who comes to get her. Grandma June comes... And uh, Angela remembers her both as Will and as Angela. And June chides the lady that runs the orphanage and tells Angela she's going to take her home to Tulsa. Tells her, you know, your father was scared by someone with a mask. We know from uh, Will's memories that was Will. And that was trying to scare him off being a masked adventurer. Marcus didn't leave any information for her, so she didn't know that Angela existed. She told Marcus not to go to Vietnam. And then on the way back home, June dies of a heart attack. And she dies in this position, this fetal position in front of a, in front of a mural of Dr. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That is him as the world, the savior defaced with devil horns and the word murderer. <laughs> so we get that sort of juxtaposition and alarms ring as Angela regains consciousness. And it says the patient is just the subject is disconnected or something like that. And she goes downstairs to the elevator and finds a sort of cerebro for Dr. Manhattan mm -hmm. where all the, all the different prayers people have sent up, including a prayer in Spanish about brain cancer. And of course, Lori's <coughs> joke. And Lady True comes in and says, look at all these unanswered, unanswered prayers. These people, they beg for help. 
and he's not listening and he's not on Mars. Dr. Manhattan's in Tulsa. He's a, he's a person. He's in disguise. Uh, Lady True says she got involved because Will needed money to stop the 7th Cavalry from doing their mesmerization plot. And what if they were to capture, destroy, and then become Dr. Manhattan? Well, that would be a pretty dire threat right to the to the united states so i guess yeah she is saving the world <laughs> and angela just leaves without asking asking true who it is right she's like why aren't you asking come on why not yeah just baiting you know finally you you know you you're they're they're both facing off here so mm -hmm. you know she's saying oh well let's cut the bullshit you know what i'm what i'm what i'm um why i'm here mm -hmm. you know you know i know something so let's just call the just chop the bullshit talk and you know, I'm gonna ask some questions here. <laughs> and and I love this this scene where she sort of like runs runs through the blockade, where she busts uh, Red Scare's car, and they're all there's all this like, like yeah. jibber jabber back and forth that I think is really funny. I, I love yeah. that Red Scare just eats junk food all the time and like she, the, the, the 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 um the um uh, I, I forget her name, but she asked Pyra him, Jenny. Yeah, Pyra Jenny. She asked him, "Why do you eat so much?" You know. She was like, Mama, he was like, my metabolism and I everything. Got high metabolism. <laughs> Is that Dave Bartello? She's under arrest. Like, that's so funny when he just yells that at her. <laughs> You're, under, You're arrest. under arrest. Tell her she's know? under arrest. <laughs> uh, Angela runs the blockade, runs home to Cal. Mm -hmm. The 7th Cavalry is watching across the street with one yep. of those 50 Cal machine guns. Yep. And... There's some hard truths being dealt to Cal. Cal, you're fake. <laughs> you're my best friend. You're the best lover I'll ever have in my life. Ooh. Clap! <laughs> Smacks him with a hammer. Oh, not not before she calls him John. She says, you know? "No, John, you aren't John. yourself." John, what? John, who? What? Huh? Then she gets at, she hits him with a hammer enough because she got to get to the white meat. <laughs> that is apparently where this ring, like a <clears throat> ring from Sonic, with a you know the the hydrogen atom. Mm -hmm. And that is Dr. Manhattan's essence. The blue light comes on. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. We're in fucking trouble. <laughs> Cut the credits. Cut the credits. And this is some real, what a great episode. And, and yeah. this is another in a run of these, probably three, four. I mean, they're all so good, but the last three have just been phenomenal. No, oh, the last, I mean, it's, it's like going up when you, when you're going up a um, roller coaster mm -hmm. and you know, you're anticipating the drop, mm -hmm. you know, and then the drop, you know, if you're a big roller coaster head and everything, the drop and the, the drilling that goes down, that's what's been going on with these past like three episodes and everything. You're going down a roller coaster, you're coming around the curve and everything. And, you know, um, uh, it, it, it eventually it's going to end, but you know, you're, 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 you're on that ride and everything. You're excited. You're on this ride. Uh, super duper cool. Yeah. And, and I, I'm so excited to see where they're going with this. Like, yeah. you know, this mesmer this mesmerism thing. Are they going to mesmerize Dr. Manhattan? Like how's the teleport going to work? Is lady Truant on all the sides? Has she been selling the seven cab faulty equipment? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, is Dr. Manhattan going to die? Lots of questions to be answered in the next couple of weeks. And they said it's self-contained, so we'll get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're supposed to get um, answers. You know, next week is a penultimate episode, so expect it to be a you know, really big doozy and everything. Absolutely. So um, um, in the PDP files, you know, they did cover um, 10 years ago in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, um, so apparently um, Angela took cow to a hospital right and she did all the talking and she did all the talking. all the talking right so who knows who cal really is right yeah exactly so you know. uh i also want to point this out something else from the wikipedia uh mm -hmm. the pdpedia oh he was infatuated by um dr manhattan bobblehead though yes get that <laughs> what is talking to the talking to the doctor <laughs> well when you die you're nothing and you were nothing before and he'll be he'll be nothing again it just makes so much sense that he's dr manhattan after that yeah. you know yeah, yeah. Uh, really cool. I, I want to point out. You sent me this. Someone else came up with some of this, but the Excalibur, uh, the uh, vibrator, uh, the, the yeah. Doctor Manhattan vibrator is named Excalibur yeah. in the PDPedia, yeah. and it's a model of Doctor Manhattan's penis, mm -hmm. whose other name would be, uh, in relationship to Lori, right? Mm -hmm. Her ex, ex Cal mm -hmm. Abar. 
Like Zip. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like some Linda Lothian stuff right there, but you yeah. know, great way to break that down and stuff. Um <laughs> And that's the app. And I don't know where they're gonna go from here. I, I'm I feel good about my lots of clones theories. Uh, yeah, that, that was that's a pretty good call. You know, the um the ready users, like I say, I can't shout you out enough for spoiling no. the whole you know, Cal is Doctor Man. Like, thanks, but you know, man. Cool I, 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 I was I was just thinking to myself when when I knew that where this was going. As soon as she um as soon as Lady True came in here, it was like let's not play around. Right. You know, like oh man, they're about to um I did I was expecting half expecting Doctor Man hadn't appear right um uh, right as soon as Angela got home and or him to change, but mm -hmm. you know they're saving that for us apparently for next week. Next week, but we'll see. um. I want to well, see yeah. the model. I'm so excited to see like what our Dr. Manhattan looks like. You know, uh, I want to see how much it does look like Cal because the picture does. Yeah. It definitely does look like Cal in the picture. <laughs> that picture looks like Cal. It does. A little bit. I thought, is that Cal? Anyway, uh, let's talk just for a second about the show we just recorded, which is an interview with artist Dan Eakin. Mm -hmm. Um, Dan is Ekis. Oh, sorry, man, I said his name wrong. Dan Ekis. Right, Dan. Sorry, mm -hmm. Dan, that's my bad. Uh, Dan is uh, an American comic artist. He's known for creating Odyssey Inc. and Soul of the World. We did an interview with him talking about you know what it's like to be a comic artist, what inspires him, some of his favorite, uh, what he likes about superhero comics, what he likes about Watchmen. Uh, we're gonna post that up. It's probably already up because it's probably required less editing than yep. this. So check that out if you haven't yet. Uh, check out our instant cast where we give you our instant reaction. Uh, check out Carbonite Bounty BS, a podcast about the Mandalorian on Disney Plus. That's a super fun show. We have our friends. Super fun. Super fun. Uh, if you don't like us as much, Ken and Tony, our friends are on that show. <laughs> you might uh, like them. You might like them better. Uh, you probably will. Our friends like them better. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can check that out. Also check out Nobody Cares, which is my podcast. Uh, format's changing on that. Nobody still cares, uh, but you can check that out. Uh, Sam, what else you got to plug today? Oh, you know, no, much, much, nothing much. Just make sure that you guys are checking out and subscribing. Always, you know, we always got to remind you subscribe and click the notification bell so you can get notifications when we do start posting. And base def, definitely, we we encourage you to comment not only um, on our, you know, watching Watchmen and Nerd Encyclopedia, mm -hmm. you know, leaving feedback. We encourage you to comment on these YouTube, you know, um, chant, um, videos and everything. And we try to do our best to respond, you know, as soon as possible to your comments. We love the feedback we've been getting so far. Yeah, throw us some comments. You know, thanks to everybody that came by for the live show. Love to see more of that. Uh, you know, super. Would love to see hear from everybody. So let us uh, let us know what you're thinking. And uh, well, that's all I got. Yeah, hell of an one. episode. Hell of an episode. You so know, good. great, great. Well, like I said, I think this was a part two to what started out as a part one with the hoodie Jessa reveal last week, and you know, going into um, Doc Manhattan's, you know, um, um, a little bit of his history and um, really. Putting him because is he's been the underlying tone this whole season, mm -hmm. you know. But they had to really introduce a lot of character before they got to the Doctor Manhattan thing, you know. Um, and I'm glad that they're really hey, diving head first into you know the um, Doctor Manhattan reveal. So I can't wait to see how this is going to um, pan out next week. I I didn't really think Doctor Manhattan was going to be a favorite character of mine because yeah. he wasn't in the actual you know graphic novel. He was just basically the 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 most superpower hero, but here, man, I cannot wait. You know, it's been like, wow, let's get let's get it going. I mean, and the other thing I'm anticipating is if they're going to number one give me who Lou Man is. <laughs> also, uh, if we're ever going to get a um, Daniel Dryberg, so uh, he's been like the other. You know, when when they talk about like the mm -hmm. the you you po you post it up on the um on the Instant React and everything. The four individuals in that, um, yeah. in that, um, um, in that painting and everything. Well, do you mean this painting? Sir? Yep, 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 yep. We see Adrian. We already got his story. We see um, Lori. We, of course, we got her story. We're getting Doc's man, you know, Doc's story. So it's like the fourth one. I mean, we need so a little bit more Dan, right? Dan Dryberg. Right? I think you're absolutely right. We need more Dan for sure. And I hope. Well, my hope sincerely is that the reason we haven't seen these things is because you got to leave us something for next year. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. you yes. got we, Dan we, locked we, away somewhere. Mm -hmm. We'll see Dan. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm hoping. So please renew HBO. Hey. 
hey, please renew. Give us more renew, because yes. I, I, you know, I tweeted out. I was like, this show is way past Emmy worthy. I mean, this is some classic stuff. If if Damon sticks the landing on this, you know, God bless him. As long as the reason Doctor Manhattan is Cal is smart, I think we're yeah. good. Okay. Uh, and there's like, and just because he wanted to is like fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're probably I'm good. Right. Without I've been enjoying the journey so far, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's, it's it's been a good thing. Great episode. Excellent, excellent. All right, so next show. We're probably going to drop a Carbonite Bounty BS this week, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. will be live on Sunday night after the show. As soon as we can get everything together and get up. Usually that's 10.05. Some weeks it's a little later. That's on me. But be patient. We'll be there handling your feedback, talking about our reaction to the show, and generally having a good time. So do stop by the channel for that. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. So thanks so much for watching. This is Nerd Cyclopedia Season 1, Episode 7. I'm sorry. Uh, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, uh, the <laughs> podcast we watch HBO show, The Watchmen. And signing off, I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. And we'll talk to you later. See you. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, they named it Her Ex, Cal Abar, and it's a oh, vibrator. So that was, you get that. That was right? like, yeah, yeah, I, I get the reference. Okay, just make it sure. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs>